Vi har massor av saker. Hello and thank you for joining us today on the Happiness Quest. My name is Jess Dutal from the Center for Transformation at Plymouth State University. And I'm Dr. Maria Sanders, a philosophy professor with Plymouth State University and CEO of Philosophy for Life. And today we have a special guest with us, yes. Brian. I'm delighted to introduce Brian Dutal, who works in uh, behavior support at Plymouth Elementary School and is an assistant coach for Plymouth State University track and field and also serves as a select board member here in Plymouth and happens to be my partner. So yes. welcome, Brian. Thanks for having welcome me. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, we are really excited about today's show. Uh, it's always a pleasure to visit with you. And also, this is going to mark a landmark transition for us. Uh, we've had 25 episodes on Happiness Quest TV. And so far, the focus has predominantly been looking at the science of happiness. So we've explored scientific research that's aligned with happiness and applied it uh, through our own lives in trying to get a deeper understanding uh, of how the research applies maybe in a very real life situation. Mm -hmm. But in phase two of the program, we're going to start looking at actual applications of what we may think of as small changes in people's daily routines, um, but the large impacts that those can have. And so it's taking the science of happiness research and kind of getting out in front of it now and applying it in our daily routines. Um, so in today's show, uh, we're gonna start with a very basic focus. I'd like to go back to the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates. Uh, Socrates is uh, rather famous for his statement, know thyself, that uh, he believed any philosophical endeavor had to begin with re internal reflection, so reflection on who we are and what works for us individually. And as we think about these eudaimonic lifestyles, we've talked about eudaimonia on the show quite a bit, uh, this Greek concept of living a full and flourishing life, or what uh, the ancient Greek philosophers uh, like to refer to as a life of excellence. Um, living a true eudaimonic lifestyle is not a change that happens overnight. Uh, in fact, it can actually take a lifetime. Uh, but the good news is very small changes can have large impacts in our life. And that is why we invited Brian uh, to kickstart uh, this very important transition to the show. Is you've recently made uh, one of these, what could out of the gate look like a relatively small lifestyle change, um, but can have a very big impact. Um, so Brian, would you share with us uh, what you've done recently uh, and in the area of juicing mm -hmm. uh, and how that's impacted uh, just your daily routine. Um, so like a majority of Americans uh, in general, I would say, uh, when you have a health issue, you want to go see a doctor. So I was not feeling healthy. Um, I had some stomach and intestinal issues that I needed to get taken care of. So I went to a doctor. The doctor put me through some tests, you know, said this, this pill might, you know, help you out, make you feel a little bit better. Um, took the pill. Uh, the pill worked while I was on it. Uh, the pill, the prescription ended. I went back to feeling unhealthy and uh, in pain. And um, so I said, there's got to be something else. So the pill was more of like a temporary. Well, absolutely. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I met this, I th met this man last summer, um, about a year ago now. And uh, we had, we were talking for a little bit, just by chance. And he was you know he had a philosophy of um you know eating as a vegan um so i was inquiring he's like eh, don't take my word for it you know a lot of people don't um then so he pointed me in this direction of some documentaries on netflix so i was like well what, you know what's the big deal what's it gonna hurt so on a lazy saturday which we don't get that often in our house um jess and i sat down kind of we watched this documentary and that led to another one and led to some you know searching on you know uh google and all these you know 
different articles. And were these documentaries and articles about veganism? They started that way. They started as um, alternative to, um, you know, the American way of consuming meat and consuming um, processed stuff. Because I figured, well, you know, that's how I had been eating. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we all go back to you are what you eat, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I took a kind of a deeper look into that to try and, you know, heal myself from within. So that's how I came upon um, juicing. And it was just taking green and other types of produce, putting it through a juice machine and drinking it um, as a quicker, quicker way of becoming healthy. Um, so I tried it. And at that point, at that point last summer, I mean, you know that I was just, I'll try anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I had already tried the doctor, like a majority of us do, to fix our, you know, health issues. Um, and you were that, juicing every single day. And I started out that day. way, yes. I started out that way. And um, they had, um, after about a week of doing uh, juicing in the morning and in the afternoon, and then eating a, a mainly plant-based uh, dinner, um, which was a lot less portions than I was used to. My body started changing. I started feeling, um, obviously my health issue went away to make mm -hmm. the, a long story short. Um, I just kind of healed myself from, you know, within what I was eating and what I was drinking. Um, and so I started looking at, looking at it like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then it had some, you know, other effects like, uh, I started feeling a little bit happier, um, more alive, uh, more energetic. Um, and with that also came incidentally weight loss and I lost about 30 pounds. Um, and I started being able to exercise more. Um, yeah, so. And you mentioned the plant-based diet. We had some conversations and we're very intentional about why plant-based over vegetarianism or mm -hmm. vegan? And do you mm -hmm. want to share why you landed with consuming a plant-based diet? Um, yeah, I was just, you know, like I said, I was trying to uh, just grasp onto anything to make me feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, sounded pretty good. It made sense. What I had read and what I had watched um, kind of made like some of the, some of the, as far as, you know, adopting some, I feel like I've pulled a little bit from like a lot of things to make my to make the way I felt um, you know better mm -hmm. and it's not about staying on a strict thing it's about you know a, a little balance here and there like right. um, you know I don't drink regular milk anymore um, I just go with almond milk I feel that you know somebody said on one of the things I saw you know are you a baby cow as a human? <laughs> no. You know, baby not, cows need Baby milk. cows need milk. Babies need mother's yeah. milk. You know, you don't, we're the you know, only species on earth to drink somebody else's milk. And well into adulthood. Well into well, adulthood. So. so that kind of clicked with me. I was like, wow, this, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and I love that you uh, mentioned you pulled from different yeah. areas. Um, because I think that's so important. Um, I have three siblings, uh, an older brother, a younger brother, and a younger sister. Mm -hmm. uh, my younger brother and sister are both vegan, and they have been for years now. Uh, we were not raised. In fact, we mm -hmm. were very meat-based yes, yes. uh, when we were raised. My older brother and myself, we are not. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have to value the importance of, with my younger siblings, when they, uh, and it was a very intentional decision, when they mm -hmm. decided to become vegans, um, they didn't take this on as if it was a mission to convert the world mm -hmm. uh, to become vegans. And I wanna be really clear on the show because as I was doing research preparing for this show, uh, the research on juicing is very mixed. It's very mm -hmm. controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, and uh, at both extremes, you hit on the pro-juicing uh, researchers talk about weight loss, they talk mm -hmm. about um, kind of increasing energy levels, uh, kind of a quick way to get vegetables into your system if you're not typically eating vegetables. But then there's pushback, uh, and I would say an equal amount of pushback, uh, that raise questions, well, wait a minute, if we were actually just eating vegetables regularly, right. then perhaps the juicing's not having mm -hmm. the huge benefits it's being mm -hmm. credited with. Uh, in if fact, we were consuming we're, that many vegetables. Exactly. In fact, right. we're losing some of those fibers and that yeah. through the juicing mm -hmm. and so forth. And so 
it's very mixed mm -hmm. out there right now. And I want to be clear that the show really isn't about us advocating juicing. It's about mm -hmm. advocating recognizing when there's something in your life you're not happy with, which mm -hmm. you already hit on that that's what motivated you mm -hmm. to take on the juicing, and being very intentional and reflective, uh, not only about trying different things to raise your level of happiness and your lifestyle in general, but reflective through the entire journey right. as well. And it sounds like you're still on that journey. Well, mm -hmm. what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for somebody else. Right. And it's yeah. perfectly fine with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when Jess told me I was coming on the show, she <laughs> said... <laughs> she said uh, when he volunteered yeah, is right. how we he, like to frame when that. When he was voluntold. <laughs> yeah, voluntold. Um, you know, I was... I was... I'm always hesitant of, you know, having focus on myself. He's not one to stand in the spotlight. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, like I said, I mean, what works for me isn't going to work for somebody else. I don't like to push anything that I believe or, you know, on anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and I've told some of my closest friends, you know, whom I work with, who asked me, you know, wow, how much weight have you lost? You know, I told them, tell them what I did, and it makes me happy. It, it works for me. I feel better. Um, and that's why, like, when I said I pull from different things, you know, it's not like in one of the documentaries I watched that motivated me to do this, this person was juicing, you know, for 60 to 90 days, and that's all they were having. I mean, I couldn't do that. Um, Justin and I were just talking this morning, like, we like chewing. You know, we mm -hmm. like... <laughs> it's you know, experiencing food, we and like we've talked to, yeah. about that. Yeah. And so I kept that part, and I just yeah. changed what I was chewing on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. and I was, you know, before this and before I started having my health issue, I was like, you know, burgers, steak, any type of meat, you give it to me because I love it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, even, you know, my past friends, and I just actually was with some friends from high school this past weekend who I hadn't seen in like 20 years, and um, that's how they knew me, you know. So when I told them, you know, this is the changes I made, they were surprised at that. Mm -hmm. But times change, people change, you know, you get a little bit older, you start developing health issues, you know, because of what you have, what I, I should say, what I have put into my body over mm -hmm. the amount of years, and this has worked for me. Mm -hmm. So Well, and that's what's so valuable yeah. and why we definitely want you to share your story um, is because it really is an internal uh, kind of look as mm -hmm. to what is working, what is not working, but also you end up inadvertently, whether it's intentional or not, becoming a source of material for others. Mm -hmm. um, that I honestly have thought of you in different <laughs> conversations I've had with Jess, and I've started juicing mm -hmm. as a supplement mm -hmm. two, three mornings mm -hmm. uh, in replacement of my breakfast. Yeah. But again, that's about all I'm willing to take on right now, mm -hmm. and it works. And I guess why I was sharing uh, my younger siblings' veganism and their beliefs towards that is there's a fallacy in logic that all too often I find, for some reason, when it enters into our eating habits. Um, this fallacy I'm thinking of is called ad populum, or you may have heard it referred to as the bandwagon technique. This, um, you should join us because we have the majority on our side, mm -hmm. or this is how most people think, so we should think this way as well. And although, in a way, we're kind of soft-wired, uh, it's a survival mechanism to try to be part of a group because back in the early caveman sort mm -hmm. of days, it, it helped us survive if we weren't the straggler out there on our right. own. When we think of it for, through the lens of us being these highly rational creatures, it actually does us a bit of injustice to just join the group and not mm -hmm. think about how not only I may be similar to the group, but more importantly, how I may be different right. and my individual needs. Uh, you know, you mm -hmm. mentioned almond milk replacing actual milk. This has been so far a three-year journey for me because, again, I drank milk pretty much mm -hmm. my entire life right up until about three, four years ago started experiencing some digestive mm -hmm. issues and traced it back to the milk. And so I immediately had switched over to soy mm -hmm. milk. Saw some differences, not entirely mm -hmm. resolving the problem. And mm -hmm. now about six months ago, I switched to almond milk. Mm -hmm. Still too soon to see if yeah. that's going to mm -hmm. do it. But that's the process that 
uh, we're really hoping viewers adopt is you try some things. You try something. With research behind it, mm -hmm. but it may or may not work for you. Mm -hmm. Try something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And this uh, kind of quickness to go to very extreme all or nothings, uh, we need to, in a very complex society, step away from yeah. that a little bit right. and find a little more individualistic. Yeah. What's ha what's working for us? What's not working? And as you started to saying, I mean, I'm thinking about you know what you said about joining the group. Do I do this too? And of course, mm -hmm. over time in our marriage and in living together, we went from opposite extremes. Like Brian was drinking you know, 2% milk and I was drink drinking skim milk when we first got married and then we decided, okay, let's compromise on one person. And so over time, our eating habits became more similar to the point where I was eating a heck of a lot more meat. And so when Brian started juicing, I thought, is this something I should do? Isn't it easier if we do it together? <laughs> and went through that process. I obviously wasn't having the health issues that Brian was yeah. having, but I will say I benefited from the juicing because I would never, first thing in the morning, eat the equivalent of kale and like four stalks of celery and carrots and cucumbers. Never would I do that. If I ate breakfast, it would be a quick bowl of cereal, maybe a banana, and typically I wouldn't eat breakfast, which I'm not, you know, yeah. um, that proud of. But so I well, benefited. we have a busy lifestyle. But we have a very busy lifestyle. Yeah. Thank Getting you. the kids to school. Yeah. To so and jobs. the mornings are busy. Yeah. And right. so to replace a breakfast with a juice that's nutrient packed was really beneficial, not just for Brian, but mm -hmm. for myself as well. And you know the kids haven't drank as many uh, juices as we have, but they started to. And um, it's not like you juice every single day, whereas last yeah, summer I mean, we did. At first to heal. Yeah. I mean, I was going, you know, every day for, I don't know exactly how long, but that's part of the point, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. You know, I healed myself by what I was putting into my body. And, you know, when I was, when I felt better, I slowed down a bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's part of, that's part of the balance aspect of it is that I don't want to feel like I'm changing too drastically all at once because from self-reflection and from past experiences if that happens i quit like that'll be it like if so it has to be a gradual thing mm -hmm. you know a lot of people and a lot of research has shown um that you know if you go too much at at, at once generally it doesn't last long that's why the fad diet comes in and out that's mm -hmm. why it's a fad that's what we talked about with new year's resolutions yeah, right yeah. and new year's resolutions exactly yeah. and so People feel like, oh, I'm, I did this, I need to do this, I'm going to do it, and then they're like, oh. well, and oh, yeah. in all yeah. honesty, a lot of the, what I would consider to be more negative research opposed to juicing tended to be an enveloped around that mm -hmm. precise point. Yeah. It was when people were looking at this as a quick fix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was going to be, and quite often it was weight mm -hmm. loss, this was yeah. going mm -hmm. to be a very quick way to drop a lot of weight. Mm -hmm or to get healthy overnight because I don't really want to eat those vegetables, so I'll trick myself into yeah. eating them. And what the researchers were really pushing back with is it has to be more of a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. And if we approach it as a quick fix, it's not going to be any more sustainable than perhaps the pills you started with, yeah. right. you know, through Absolutely. the medical community yeah. was. Um, um, yeah, and another, to another point, it's maybe off this topic a little bit, but um, as I, was you know putting the vegetables through the juicer a lot of it comes out and a lot of it the is pulp. like the it's the fiber the pulp it, mm -hmm. it and so i felt really bad about that and um so when you say comes out it's waste. not actually making it into no it takes all right. the juice takes all mm -hmm. the juice out of the produce that you're putting into it and that's the part you drink obviously and then the fiber ish part that it is not juiceable, whatever, it just comes out into a discharge area. So after a while, I felt pretty bad about throwing all that out. And so I was talking to somebody at, um, at school and he raises chickens. So he said, that makes great chicken feed. And I said, it's yours, I'll bring it to you every day. And so in turn, he would give us eggs. Um, so we kind of bartered like that, and I felt pretty good about mm, that. That's so, nice, yeah. recycling back yeah. into yeah. the larger yeah. system. Yeah. So yeah, we both felt better about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was worried about all the waste, and but to your point, and I want to say this that 
uh, Brian was very intentional about not going to the extreme of veganism, even though we both love the idea of it. It's just not practical in our lifestyle right now. It doesn't mean we will never be vegetarians or vegans. We might be, but mm -hmm. I think you know when you wrap your mind around it has to be all or nothing. It has to be all this, or I'm not going to do any of it. That's and we talked about this when we were discussing resolutions. That's where sometimes you can fall and feel like a failure, and then not get back yeah. into what you've committed to. Absolutely. So this is what's working right now. Um, well, and I'm reminded of an interesting story. Uh, a friend of mine, this is going back about 12 years now, mm -hmm. we talk about veganism. And I should say for both my younger siblings, it is the perfect choice for them. Mm. And they're much healthier. I can tell they're at balance with being mm. vegans. It really fits. Um, they don't try to push it on other people, but if you ask questions, they're always willing to share yeah. that information. But I had a friend, and I'll leave her nameless, because uh, she was, well, let's say she's self-identified as vegan. And I'm hesitant to just call her a vegan because I was kind of her closet carnivore, I guess maybe you can think of it that way, is about once every two months, she would contact me to go out and get a burger. And because there was no judgment and yeah. I would keep it confidential. Yeah. But every time, and this fascinated me as a philosopher, I would have a discussion with her and I'm like, you know, technically you're really not a vegan. It's if you're craving this burger right. and following through and actually eating this burger, perhaps you should explore why that's the case. And after about a year and a half um, of the, our every other month burger runs, uh, what she realized is it was really a lack of protein in her system. She was not her body properly. Was it. She mm -hmm. wasn't properly replacing the protein that she had removed with the meat um, with plant-based mm -hmm. proteins, mm -hmm. and so her body literally craved right. this protein. And fortunately, she listened to that, or she yeah. would have had severe health mm -hmm. issues. Um, but even with the occasional burger run. Uh, she still ended up with health issues. And her physician literally told her she had to get off of the vegan um, kind of diet lifestyle she was on, even if it was just temporary, or she would have to step up the plant-based yeah. proteins. Yeah. But I guess that's part of this when we say it's a very intentional choice uh, in an Udamonic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, there is a commitment beyond, uh, like we mentioned juicing here, to just take on juicing mm -hmm. isn't going to solve it. It's becoming educated yeah. about and what you're juicing, yourself, what you're your putting body. in. Exactly, yeah. how it's reacting. Yeah. And it may react differently for yeah. different people. Mm -hmm. uh, for my friend, she's now a vegetarian, mm -hmm. um, but she's no longer vegan. Yeah. And what she found were the extreme lifestyle of the vegan, and she had a very mm -hmm. extreme one, it was actually having health issues because she wasn't willing to fully Mm -hmm. commit to right. everything that that yeah. incorporated. And some of it was the busyness of her lifestyle. It was going to take adjustments mm -hmm. that she wasn't willing to make, because right. she could have, yeah. but she wasn't willing to make those adjustments. Mm -hmm. And I guess at the end of the day, that's okay. It's okay. You know, yeah. And it would actually, I guess, have been better for her to recognize that earlier, rather than doing the, the kind of hidden mm -hmm. burger runs. Mm -hmm is to give herself permission, mm -hmm. as you were mentioning, Brian, to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, what works and for her and what's not what works working. for you. And I can relate exactly. to that story. I went three years before we had Noah not eating any red meat. And then when I got pregnant with Noah, all I wanted was a burger. And I didn't know why, but my body needed yeah, that. It's craving. Yeah, and Brian was excited at the time. That was great. He was eating a lot of burgers. <laughs> time, so. Yeah, but can you tell us, have there been any challenges for you yeah, about I'm, this journey? There is. I mean, you when you change something in your life that's, you know, for me, you know, I identified, you know, with food a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it was, you know, making the change and sticking with it um, so I didn't fall off and mm -hmm. go back to, you know, the health issues that I had experienced. Um, so the the balance part is extremely important in the way I choose to um, you know, put fuel into my body. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I also don't like putting people out. So if someone's going to invite us over for a barbecue and provide chicken wings and burgers and hot dogs, then I have a lot less than I normally would have had. Mm -hmm. um, and so as not to insult or not to make a big deal or what, however you choose to see it, but um, that's part of the, the plant-based approach. 
the you know works for me right. personally. We go to my parents' house every Friday for Family Friday Fun Night, and they cook dinner for us. And my mom has had to really come around and understanding what does it mean that Brian's no longer eating all that I used to make for him. And, you know, his portion sizes are smaller, and so she's left with a lot of food that she, you know, wasn't left with in the past. And why are you not having seconds, Brian? And so it's been interesting. And I, I think about, you mentioned last weekend when you were with your friends from high school, and they went out to dinner to Jesse's in uh, Lebanon. And that's a steakhouse. That's a steakhouse. <laughs> that's a steakhouse. <laughs> and it's one of our favorite restaurants we grew up in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And so I was interested. And I said, Brian, what did you have? And he stuck to the salad bar. So yeah. I think that's pretty remarkable. And I'm so proud of your commitment and the way that you've really been determined to take healthy uh, steps forward. But it. It is interesting when we think about the social implications because that's yes. really what you're hitting on. Absolutely. Is there's yeah. definitely social there consequences are. and yeah. shifts in yeah. those connections that you had yeah. with former friends or family yeah. members. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm, I've never been one to push anything on another person saying my way is right. You know, you should really look into your way because that's really hurting you or whatever. Um, I think that for most people, they need to figure that out on their own. Um, like I have, um, you know, socially, it's different for those who haven't seen me for a while or sit down to a meal and expect me to get, you know, a steak or a burger or whatever, and I get the salad bar. But, you know, they ask questions, you know, and that brings up the conversation that we're having right now. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's going on? You know, why aren't you getting the peppercorn steak? Like, <laughs> we expect you to. I said, well, this is why, and I explain it to them. They're quite interested, and in overall, always accepting. I mean, because I'm not going out saying, you know, this is this is what you should do. Mm -hmm. um, and and a lot of people have similar stories, you know. It always does. It does. It does. It does. It? And mm -hmm. it's like, like you said, socially, it's, it's not as, you know, we haven't been conditioned to think this way and to think like, you know, milk, steak and potatoes, you know, this and that. That's, that's you know, a lot of people grew up that way. That was, that was the healthy way to eat. Um, and it's not necessarily that way. Um, for everybody, some people are still into that. Mm -hmm. Well, and there are cultural and identity issues mm -hmm. that surface with it. We identify with the foods we eat. Mm -hmm. um, last semester, I taught uh, a course on food ethics. Uh, it was actually a team taught course with an art instructor, Nick Savini, on campus. He was teaching table manners, and they would make uh, tableware out of ceramics while they learned about food ethics in my course. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we spent a lot of time uh, basically trying to peel the layers back is to what extent at a pretty broad cultural level food becomes a central identifying yeah. uh, force and then also individually. Uh, when we think about meat, meat tends to be identified with the masculine gender. Mm -hmm. You know, much more so, when, even yeah. if you think historically in pictures uh, quite said, often, the Vikings, they had dang. the big drumstick, yeah. you know, or yeah. they'll have meat. The There's kings. actually a picture of me yeah. with a huge drumstick in yeah. my mouth floating around. I think I, I think I have it. Yeah. Uh, and my <laughs> uncle blew it up into this poster-sized picture because it was the first time he had seen me with a full beard. It was just, <laughs> this was like when I came back from college and had Thanksgiving with my family. And so they said, oh, take, take a drumstick and bite into it, and there's me. And then he, for Christmas, he gave me this poster size it's picture huge. of my face with a drumstick <laughs> in my mouth. So I'm exactly right. Right? Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so when we think about it, uh, especially with our friends, that understanding that needs to be there, because you've literally changed who you are. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not yeah. merely a dietary change. Right. You know, and that's that it exactly becomes part of who we are and our being. That's what I was going to say. I, it, when people say, wow, Brian lost all that weight. You know, I'm quick to say it's not just about the weight, you know. It's what like other changes have you weight. observed beyond just physical changes? Yeah, and, I, you know, I think our whole family has experienced the benefit because not only, you know, are we all eating more healthy, but we're hiking now together. And mm. um, like Brian mentioned, you know, he is happier, but we're also going, you know, on more outings. And so the change that he made for himself has rippled throughout our family. And... Mm -hmm. And he's moving through the world differently. 
you know, so I, I think that's fair to How say. How so? How so? <laughs> I feel like not only are you lighter, you know, in in your physique, <laughs> but just You're floating lighter, through the world. But just right. lighter in being, right? Ooh, because flying. you feel better. Yeah. And well, I think when you don't that have makes a, a big difference. When you don't have a health issue weighing you down and, yeah. like, on your mind all the time, like, what's happening, you know, you, you live a little bit less stressful. Yeah, yeah. And, less stress. Um, I think in general, it's helped me live a little bit less stressful. So, yeah. and I am all about no stress. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> uh, it can creep up. But. Well, and we've mentioned that multiple times on the show. Yeah. Stress. Uh, now, there's a healthy level of stress, but mm -hmm. all too often we push beyond that, and it ends up to be an inhibitor yeah. of happiness. Right. Uh, so it does all play together. Uh, do you have a favorite juicing recipe that you'd want to share? I have one juicing recipe. Actually, I tried. <laughs> I, I tried one other one, and it was with carrots, but carrots don't really work that well for me in the juicer, so I got rid of the carrots. I My basic recipe that, I, that I'll that i stick to because it was, it, was the, it was tasty and it got me through it was um, kale, celery, green apples, um, kale, celery, Cucumber. cucumbers. Those are the four main ingredients. And then uh, a lemon and then ginger to your liking ginger oh. root uh ginger root goes right through the juicer and it's not chunky it's it's pretty cool it adds a little spice a little heat um and it also has really good um health benefits to it yeah. um and i found that the more ginger the better so well, that i like delicious. the ginger too but a little less ginger she I didn't like, like you didn't like more apples the more, <laughs> she likes more more of the sweet stuff if you've I'm ever seen her coffee mug apple, yeah. lighter and sweeter the better yeah. Yeah, I drink cream and sugar with a yep. little bit of coffee, yep. so yeah. I like the apple. I have to admit, my juicing recipe so far is a little sweeter. It's more <laughs> berry-based, yep. where it has the blueberries, strawberries, kale. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, that's the only vegetable I've worked in, although I'm yep. about to add cucumber yeah. to that as well. Yeah, Honestly, nice. though, if you want to try it out, you can put all those those things that don't really have a lot of flavor, like the celery. That or that brings the volume of the juice that you drink up because celery is just packed with water. Mm -hmm. And then the kale, mm -hmm. uh, you put more kale, the more kale you put in, it seems like the less amount of juice you get because <laughs> like, honestly, it's, it's really dense and pa like the stuff that comes out of the kale is just pure green, it's dark green, mm -hmm. just juice. And it takes a lot of kale to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we're fortunate enough in our life where you know, we can afford to go to the grocery store or go to um, the farmer's market or um, Longview and get what, we need. get what we need. But it's it's not, and we talk about social, you know, it's not um, feasible for a lot of people and that's what makes me um, a little frustrated. Yeah. Um, that in our culture, it's cheaper and easier to eat um, crappy stuff than mm -hmm. Um, to go out and to get the stuff that we really need. And it tends to be much more expensive. It is. Healthier, it is. You know, yeah. That, yeah, we strive to eat. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and to frame this a little bit back into the philosophers, uh, when I think about the difference between Plato's philosophy versus Aristotle, Plato uh, tended to believe in his ethics system that as long as we know what's right, we'll automatically do it. So mm -hmm. if I watch the Netflix and I read a few articles, I'm there, I'm good. And Aristotle, who was Plato's student, disagreed with that yeah. and felt that uh, it's important to figure out what is right, that yeah. knowledge level, but actually following through and doing it, taking action, was if not as equal of a difficult step, even more difficult. And that's what I admire with what you've done because as we talk about setting goals, making the uh, attainment of those goals realistic, we have to work right in there that we're going to trip at mm -hmm. times. And uh, in our culture, in our society, we cringe when we hear that term failure. We, we identify it as if it's um, a very stagnant thing. I either succeed or I fail. Yeah. And we do a lot of grading based upon uh, that type yeah. of a system. So we've grown up with that kind of a notion. When in reality, when we think about setting goals and changing lifestyles and trying to achieve new goals, uh, this concept, and I'll put it in quotes, of failure is really the pre-steps to accomplishing. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's a necessary 
learning step mm -hmm. uh, to actually accomplishing a goal. It's a requirement of growth. It ha yes, otherwise these yeah. wouldn't be difficult changes right. that we're taking right. on. Um, so very yeah. commendable what Thank you've you. taken on. Thanks. And uh, I will fail much before I get to the point <laughs> that <laughs> and I'll be okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> and we really appreciate you being on the show today. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, or we're happy to have you. And telling me. You're welcome. Yeah. And like I said, I'm incredibly proud of you. Thanks. It's definitely been a fun journey. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks, and thank all of you for watching. Uh, that We hope the takeaway in today's show is to look for those small changes uh, that you can make in your daily routine. Reflect upon how it's impacting your life as you try something new. Uh, and it's probably advisable not to try too many things at once. <laughs> you know, pick one or two things. Uh, be very forgiving when it doesn't work out Gentle exactly as you had hoped. Uh, and reflect upon how that impacts your life. Uh, and if you decide to take on some of those changes, we'd love to hear about it. Um, so uh, join us next time for Happiness Quest TV. Thank you. Thank you.